Alright guys, so you guys saw me gap all eight of those top piston rings and all eight of those bottom piston rings. We set it to a 24 thousandths on the top ring and a 22 thousandths on the bottom ring. What the piston ring gap is, is this gap right there. that tiny little gap and that is the gap that under boosted and nitrous application motors is you're going to want a little bit bigger gap because when that piston gets hot and that piston ring gets hot is that gap actually closes up and with boost and nitrous that gap will close up a lot faster because it gets a lot hotter in that cylinder. So on a naturally aspirated setup you can run tighter piston ring clearances than you can on a boosted or nitrous applicate motor. So how you set those piston ring gaps is you first you need to lay out every single cylinder and you will gap the piston ring according to what cylinder it is in. So then after you figure that out, you take your piston ring and you set it in your cylinder like how I have it now. Now you take one of your pistons and you push that piston ring down to get it nice and flat, just like that. Then you are gonna take your feeler gauge here, whatever thickness you are going to be running, which I am running a 24 thousandths on this top ring. And you are just going to slide that baby right in between that gap, as you guys can see. It's a nice tight fit, but it does fit. So if the gap isn't 24 thousandths and you need to go bigger, you will take your piston ring out. I like to use a bench grinder, as you guys could hear in the background, and put a cutoff wheel on there. And then you just take your piston ring with two hands and squeeze it while it's running on there like for a couple seconds because it takes a lot off really quick. Then after you do that, you'll come over and file the corners to each of the piston rings so you have no burrs because you don't want any burrs in there to scratch your cylinder. Then you're going to come back, put it back in your cylinder like so and double check how much you took off because if you because if you take too much off you can't add but you can always subtract and then again take the piston flatten that piston ring out and then take our feeler gauge with our 24 thousandths out and again you're going to just double check that that it's 24 thousandths which this is and then yeah, you'll just reinstall your piston rings onto your piston. The little tool I was using to do this though is a piston ring spreader, which is right here. They come in very handy. You just set it on the piston ring. There's two little grooves right there and they spread the piston ring to go on top of the piston. They make life a lot easier. Otherwise you have to like spiral them on, which I've done in the past. That works as well. Just make sure you don't scratch that piston. I've done that too. So again, I'm running that 24 thousandths on the top ring, 22 thousandths on the bottom ring. I hope this video helps you guys figure out how to gap piston rings in your boosted engines. Uh, you want, again, you want a little thicker or more gap with boost and nitrous than you do on a naturally aspirated setup. Go look on forums, go read a lot about it. I run 24 thousandths and 22 thousandths in my SRT10 over there. And we're doing just the same in this motor too because I'm very happy with that one. Because if you run too big of a piston ring gap, you'll have crazy blow by, you'll have idling issues, you'll have oil consumption. So that piston ring gap is very crucial to your engine build and you should always set piston ring gaps whenever you're building an engine. And as always guys, thank you for watching and keep it boosted. And we'll see you guys in the next video.